Hey guys, Ryan Kleckner with Gun University. We've already covered the basic parts of the scope, and now we're doing a deeper dive into each one of those parts and seeing how they work. And in this video, we're gonna talk about first focal plane versus second focal plane. <laughs> Now these are terms you might have encountered when you've been looking at scopes before and if you don't know what those terms are or even which one's right for you, I've got some good news. We're going to help you figure that out. Now first focal plane and second focal plane literally refer to the target's image and reticle being in either the first or the second focal plane of the scope, but that doesn't help you very much understanding what they are or why one might be better than the other for a certain application. Instead, let's talk about what happens to the target image in either one of those scopes. In a second focal plane scope, which is what older scopes predominantly were, the target's image would increase and decrease when you change the magnification setting, but the reticle would stay the same size. A second focal plane scope, the reticle stays the same, where the target's image gets bigger and smaller with adjustment changes. Now contrast that to a first focal plane scope, and even though it has the word first in it, it actually is more popular now. It was not what scopes used to be. It's the newer version. First focal plane scopes, the reticle and the target image get bigger and smaller together. So that means when you power down all the way, the reticle gets really tiny with the tiny target image. Or if you zoom all the way in, the reticle gets really big with the big target image. Now that is really handy if you're using adjustments on that reticle to make measurements on the target, or if you're using certain wind or elevation holds, because those adjustments are accurate at any magnification setting. Whereas with the older second focal plane scopes, like I learned on, I had a mil dot scope in the military where they had these little dots on the scope that measured out as one mil each. If you're curious about what mils and minutes and all those things are, we've got other videos for you there. But that mil would only equal one actual mil measurement if the scope was on its maximum setting because it was a second focal plane scope. And when I made the adjustments, the target would change when the reticle wouldn't. Whereas the first focal plane any magnification setting, it's always one mil because they change size together. So why should you get one over the other? Well, if you're looking to save some money and you want a quality scope, you can get a second focal plane scope because they're usually less expensive, all else being equal than a first focal plane scope. And if you're not doing target shooting where it's absolutely necessary that the reticle and the target image are exactly the same size, that might be a good spot to save some of your budget. But when you're hunting, I prefer a second focal plane scope. It's not as fancy, doesn't have as many features, I get it, but the reason I like it is I'm often shooting at low magnification settings when I'm hunting, or I'm shooting in low light scenarios. On a first focal plane scope, where that reticle gets really tiny when I'm zoomed all the way out, that's really hard to see sometimes, especially in low light situations. Where that second focal plane scope, I have that crisp, clear, big reticle even though the target's image might be smaller. So think about your application and decide on whether having one difference or the other is really worth it or not. Target shooting, where you need to have precise measurements at every focal range, go ahead and splurge on the first focal plane scope. But if you're hunting, or maybe that feature is not as important to you, just remember that the measurements are only gonna work at one magnification setting and save some money on that second focal plane scope.